Okay, if you want to go see comedian Tiffany Haddish, she is in town last day of the month. Friday, January 31st. That would be this week. It's getting away from me. This Friday night, MGM Northfield Park Center Stage. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com, but you can grab this bear by being caller number 11. Okay, good luck. Have fun. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Hello. Alexa, play 100.7 WMMS on iHeartRadio. Here you go. From the Final Touch Construction, Roofing, Siding, and Window Studios, it's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. An iHeartRadio station. I'm forgetting that January is almost over. I know, it's crazy. We got the Polar Blast coming up next Friday night. Get all the details at alancockshow.com. Want to try to register to get on Pound Cake's team, Barely White. And we always have discount tickets for you if you just want to come and hang, because it's always a good time. Uh, But they go quickly, so if we still have them, they're $10.07. Go to alancockshow.com. Use the keyword Polar Blast. There are prizes for the winning team. If you correctly predict the winning team, uh, you can get those very same prizes. Thanks to Bud Light, who is uh, one of our sponsors every year. Charles Scott Salons and Spas. Thanks to Monster Energy. Thank you to Statement Limousine. They get us there and back so we can party. And DJ Cairo always takes care of the music, too. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, If you want to join us one week from this Friday out of Boston Mills Brandywine. Hey, Mark. Hello, Alan. What's going this on? is tolerable. How are you? Hey, thanks, man. Hey, I uh, grew up in an old neighborhood in Cleveland. A lot of two-family houses. Had a new neighbor and his newlywed wife move in a couple doors down. Looked familiar. Ends up that I went to school with his brother. So I go over and introduce myself. We're chit-chatting. And he goes, man, he goes, this house is really nice. The living room. It's like a two-tone carpet. There's like a three-foot border all the way around the living room of one color, and the center has a different color. And I look at him, and I go, that's because the tenant before you sat in the middle of the living room floor, put a shotgun in his mouth, and did himself. And the landlord just cut out the middle and replaced everything else. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wow. He goes, Tell my wife I'll kill you. I said, give me your wife's sister's phone number, and I won't. Yeah! Y'all say okay. something for everybody in there. <laughs> I'm out. Right, okay, thank you. There's Mark. People are texting me that you don't have to disclose a death in the house in Ohio. Oh, okay. I thought I you know. did, but I, yeah, I don't know for sure. I'm like wildly uncomfortable with death in general. Why I mean, is that? I'm sure it's got something to do with my religious upbringing. Oh, and, yeah, like, okay. not knowing where you end up and, you know, that whole thing. And I don't know where I stand with religion, so it makes me uncomfortable to think about death. Yeah, because most people relate, raised with intense religion, like, they can't wait to die. Yeah. That's <laughs> why, like, like that. that's why a lot of... I have a super bad relationship with the church. I just didn't like the people that were in the church, some of the teachings. I still agree with and things like that. But there were people that I met that I'm like, you're such a horrible person. You call yourself a Christian and you look down on everyone and judge everybody when you're a terrible person yourself. Right. So my issue is more with the people than it was with the teachings. So it's yeah, like... Yeah, sure. People will screw anything up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let me go to uh, Russ. Hi, Russ. Hey, uh, Bill will appreciate this one. I was... Uh looking at, at a historical map from the 1800s of the Medina area. Oh, yeah. And uh, found out that a really expensive house over uh, near Weymouth. Yeah, I'm uh, in Weymouth. It says, uh, on, the, on the historical map, it shows Indian graveyard mm-hmm. and fort, <laughs> like directly underneath this guy's uh, where he built his house at. Kind of lost me there at the end. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, now that, there's a bunch of stuff like that. and Because they had uh, different spots in Medina. Like, there's historical homes in Medina where there was crazy things that happened. There was a lot of uh, stops on the Underground Railroad where people had, like, little spots where they would h- hide slaves that were trying to make their way north and stuff. So there's a bunch of cool history in Medina. They had the Giants, the Seville Giants. You know those guys? No. Oh. Big giant. <laughs> I just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just letting you hang there. Yeah, Russ it's was like there, the but I guess team, he's I not know. down with them Seville Giants, I guess. Uh, Al and I rented a really sketchy motel room one time, and there was a gunshot blood splatter on the mattress. Yeah, okay. What if somebody in the house died of autoerotic asphyxiation, Mary? Right? 
What if the only part of the carpet they had to replace is because it was just slightly <laughs> soaked <'Cause>... through? <laughs> oh, boy. Imagine that. That's a crime of passion still. <laughs> it know? is a crime of passion. <laughs> oh. Hey, Melissa. Hi. Hi. I called to just add to Mary's fear. Um, so I manage apartments, and when I was down in Orlando, I had a guy... He was an older guy, um, but he ended up passing away in his kitchen. Um, but no one knew about it for about a month. So he, he entirely decomposed in his kitchen. Oh, my God. So we had to rip up the flooring, the cabinets, new appliances. So the next resident got a brand new kitchen, and they would have never known it because the guy died. <laughs> And you don't have to disclose it down there? Not at all. You don't even have to do it up here because I manage apartments up here, too. You don't have to. All you can say, just smile and say, just, you know, fair housing, can't uh, discuss anything about the prior residence, and that just goes across the board. So it's, so it's one of those things where if someone asks you, you don't have to tell them. Yeah, exactly. I pretty much just say, sorry, I can't talk about that, and then move on to the next subject. I can't talk about where we found pieces of the last tenant all over the back wall. I cannot (laughs) discuss this with you. That's exactly it. Absolutely. Just because we found a foot in the laundry chute, I'm sorry. You're not going to get me to admit that. I can't tell you. Yeah, that's exactly it. No clue. That might not even belong here. It could be the neighbors. You never know. Right. That nope. that could be anyone's foot. <laughs> Come on. This guy yeah. died in his kitchen. We, we we found his ankles in the microwave. Oh, yeah. I don't know anything oh, about that. So bad. Yeah. Oh, Melissa. Yeah, no, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if that's his head on the stove. <laughs> Melissa, yeah. do you um do you manage apartments that are above ground? Um <laughs> Well, coincidentally, I did have a place that had something in the basement. No, I don't want a basement apartment. She's a, she wants you to move lower like, into no, the earth. No, more, no, no she's trying to find a place lower. above ground. I want an above ground apartment. And if you have one of those, oh, well, hit me up on Instagram, Mary Santora Comedy. I will, put you, I will go so far as to even put you on the second floor. Look okay? at that. Second floor. So when things get really bad, you can jump out the window. Exactly. <laughs> hit me up. I'm not kidding. All right, you said Instagram? Yeah, Mary Santor Comedy on Instagram. Send me a message. I got you, girl. Don't worry. Thank you. All right, thank you, Melissa. There you go. Alan, what if the ghost could make Mary a famous comedian? Would she live there if that were the case? What, like a, like Carlin died in my apartment and he's going to give me no, tips? Just, like? No, because just the, the ghost. It's just a ghost and it lives in your apartment, but you become famous because of that. Because situation. of my, my yeah. interactions yeah. with the ghost? Yeah. All the material I would derive from acting yes. with the ghost? Mm-hmm. It's like the, the ghost of Barry Katz. I know he's still mm-hmm. alive, but, you know, he, he <laughs> like, gives you the accolade, and there you're, you're off. I guess that's different. But not many ghosts who die in a murder-suicide are funny, I would assume. It what if it's a, if it's funny. It's just there. What if it's a mercy killing? Like someone's, like, too old and they need to be put out of their misery? That's right. Like the notebook. I know they both die. I was he like, God, there wasn't a mercy killing. No, 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 no. But, 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 but they're both old and they're enfeebled. Like, and, old you know. people doesn't bother me. Someone dying, just passing away because they're old mm-hmm. is not the same as a, a murderous rage. A murderous rage. Okay. So it's the rage you don't like. It's the, it's the, it's the, uh, yes. You're more from the, you're more from the Japanese school of spiritual belief. Which is? They believe very strongly in like ghosts and negative energy and all that stuff. So it's like that, uh, they have whole movie series based on that. Like when, when a uh, person murders out of rage, that ghost continues to feed on other people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. My wife, ex-wife lived in Tokyo for a number of years and she's like, that whole country is very superstitious with yeah. ghosts and like if they build a new hotel they have to make sure that they have like an extra room in case there's a ghost like it's very very well, yeah it's that, very into yeah. that I think that I mean it's like equal I parts, said, the energy it's it. equal parts fear and respect right. as part of their culture I guess hey Kaylee hi Alan what's going on Kaylee well, I mean, it started with mice, and then it went to murder, and then it went to Seville, and yeah. now we're talking about mercy killing. Yeah, so that's right. It's all, it's all relevant to what I called about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just a typical Wednesday. So the, the other day, um, I, I went into our cupboard, and I went to get 
a granola bar for work, and it was half nibbled and surrounded by turds. <laughs> so par- apparently we had apparently we had a <laughs> mouse problem, and we went to the store. We got the traps, whatever. We set them up by all of where the food is, and I come home from work, and the trap is gone. Like, it's just one of those old snap traps, and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure I put one there. And as I'm going to check for it, here comes this mouse scurrying across the kitchen floor with half of its head smashed in the trap. Still alive. And I'm like, oh, my God. So this, the animal instinct in me kicks in, and instead of just putting this mouse out of its misery, I decided to release it from the trap and put it in a warm little box and give it a little habitat and try and feed it with a half-smashed face, and I feel horrible. And later on, the mercy killing comes. That's not the animal had... instincts in you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the motherly instincts in you. Yeah, motherly. I animal know. instincts I have been to eat. Yeah, other animal instincts, you've been like, you're done. Bam. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we we end oh well, not we I end up putting it into a little box and take care of it and it's sitting there and it's heart beating and I'm like crying and I'm like oh my god I feel so bad why couldn't you have just died you stupid little piece of crap you were just your neck was just supposed to snap and it was supposed to be over with and later that night Steve comes home and he's like you're not gonna make that thing suffer through the night are you so we end up putting it into a plastic bag taking it out of the porch and smashing it with a tractor weight and oh it looked God. like someone stepped on it. it looked like someone stepped on like a really really ripe tomato you just delayed the inevitable yeah. kaylee you increased I know, that animal's I know. suffering tenfold i know good I job it was just supposed to die why why did it have to like only get half of its space smashed like it was its own fault kind of in i'll my tell you eyes. what was... the upside of this bill with that. Kaylee's living up to her credo, whatever it takes. <laughs> She's living up to it. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. The Cat rats are gonna, gonna do. do. The rats are gonna, gonna do. do. I said the we mouse is gonna to do. do. I said whatever it takes. <laughs> That's right. Oh boy. Little cannibal corpse hammer smashed face for you. You like that? Mm-mm. Oh. She yeah. was talking about that uh, mouse. I thought that's what they were saying. You'll recall this from the film Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Mm. When he's in the club scene, that's Cannibal Corpse that's Steve up there. Steve here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the password? Manhattan clam chowder. Oh, no, New England. Clam New England chowder. clam chowder. Is, Is that, that the, the red or the white? White. Yes. Yes. Hey, great, drunk great Sue. Time. Hey, baby. How are you? Where you been? Oh, you know, I've just been just doing what I got to do. Hi, Mary. Hi, Bill. Hi. Hi. Hey, listen, I wanted to tell you about when I saw Great Whites. The band or the shark? Yes. No, great. Shut up. <laughs> great Whites and Tesla. <laughs> the animal might be a little bit more compelling. All right, go ahead. Know, right? You didn't happen great to see them Tesla. in Providence, Rhode Island, did you? <laughs> barely no. got out with your life? Okay. I, I barely skipped through with a flight. Um, and we almost crashed into a hill. Not too early. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was living in San Diego, and the, the station out there, KGB, was yeah. giving away tickets. <laughs> no, they, they keep calling it Killer Green Bud. But anyway. Killer Green Bud. That yeah. station tried to KGB hire me FM. two years ago. I kid you not. It was KGB FM. Anyways, yeah, I know. So I won tickets to go see Great White and Tesla. Well, out of all the people that won, one person got the grand prize, which was tickets, backstage, dinner with the band, front row seats, awesome. Guess who won it? Huh? Drunk Sue. Drunk Sue won. I kid you not. They were, the guys were so much fun. But you know what we had for dinner? Shark. Shark meat. Yeah. Yep. The drummer from Great White goes, are you going to eat that? And I go, no. He took his fork, plucked it on my plate, and took it right off. And he said, thank you very much. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, listen, thank you, Sue. I always uh, appreciate uh, hearing from you, uh, having dinner with uh, Great White. The band, not the shark. Mm-hmm. 
It's an important but distinction to make. Shark. But they ate shark. Yes. Have you ever eaten shark? Yeah. I have. I have not. In, in the Virgin Islands, yeah. Okay. Was it good? Mm. Uh, it tastes like what you think like it would. Meaty, fish. Like meaty? Yeah. Tastes like fish. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, neighbor two doors down from us, shared the house with his mom. Her boyfriend came in, murdered her, their two dogs, and himself, and the son still lives in the house. No way! Listen, man, you got the house to yourself. If he's living with his mom, it's not like this guy's high on the hog, you know? He's like, where the hell am I going to go? I just, my big issue is that I think I would, I would think about the crimes too much. I would dwell on it. I'd be like, I can't, like this, someone got murdered here, someone was that angry, someone was a victim... It would it would mess with me being able to sleep at night. But it's the violence you don't like. It's the violence. Let me throw this at you. Alan, there's a house that had a mom and a son, and the son was a paraplegic. So the mom passed away, so she wasn't able to give her son the medication, and then the son passed away. And they also had a dog, and the dog died too. Boy, nobody was checking on these people. Right. At all. I'm always fascinated by these people that no one checked on. Right. Yeah, right. You know, they're like, oh, the son found out that his mom died. I'm like, you didn't call her ever? It's been right. a month. They found her dead in the in the armchair or Flies whatever. Ar- yeah. around what, her. What about that house? That's so Where everybody sad. just... Tapered de- off. Tapered <laughs> off and decomposed. Yeah. I don't like death, man. Okay, Mary, what about if your family, a family member left you a house? Like, None of us said we like death. A, a wealthy family member, say you have one. Okay, you have a rich uncle. Say Every, you have one, because we know you don't. Everyone has a rich uncle. Um, say he croaks, and he's like, in my will, he croaks in the house, and he says, Mary has to live in my house, or it goes to auction. Would and you, he, he killed himself in the house? Yep. But it's your house. It's a, it's a million-dollar home. Oh, my God. And dude. you can do what you want with it, you, but you have to live in it. You can I, re- I, renovate I, it. I don't think that I could. Gonna, I really don't. You're going to say no to a million dollar home. Dude, I would like go check it. I don't, I don't know. And then you guys are going to get on me about all this stuff. I would go in there and see how it felt. Listen, one if of my... F- if I get in there and it feels creepy and dark and sad, then that's one thing. One of, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite uh, follows on Instagram is Texas Crime Scene Cleaners. No way. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It puts you face to face. I don't need to be. With the viscera Mm-mm. of life, with the realities of, you know, to, to face those things. Listen, I'm close. I mean, all things being equal, I'm closer to death than you are by a good lot. You know, I don't like to think about it. I have a young child. But, uh, you know, to, to uh, think about it and not be tortured by it, whatever, you know, it's inevitable. I think it's my issue is I can't. Why spin, not get a great house out of it? I can't spin. A, I can't spin a murder suicide into a positive light. You don't have to spin it into a positive to, light. For me, I do. Is what I'm telling you. I cannot what? live in a place and mentally accept the fact that someone was murdered there. And I can't even like someone who died of old age or uh, the grandma pa- or the mom passed and then her son didn't get his medicine. Like that kind of just. We did its way out. That I could be like, okay, he was probably going to go anyway. If he had all that medication, he wasn't living any kind of a, a, a life worth, you know, with a lot of quality to it. I can kind of justify think, that in my head. I think your avoidant personality, because things like that you try to avoid rather than just face, leads you to dwell on them more than you should, rather than just facing them and going, okay, this happened. I'm going to process it and move on. You keep saying I have an avoidant personality. To and certain I, things. I, I, I don't mean it do at I, all. I don't mean it for everything, but there's certain things that you avoid thinking about and, and dealing with. Like death? Yeah. Why do I need to think about death? I mean, you've stayed in a lot of hotel rooms. I'm sure someone died in one of those. Why do you have to say that kind of stuff? Because it's true. Because it freaks me out. I it's, don't like to be nervous it's, and anxious it's stati- and weirded out. Then don't be. It's statistically probably factual, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, trust me, a death is probably one of the best things you can encounter in a hotel room. <laughs> right. Jesus. Oh, we don't ever uh, clean the comforters. And, and the reason I bring up the parts, of, like, there's certain things that you say, I don't know how I feel about that because you don't think about that. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm talking about when it comes to those, uh, like, avoiding certain I think the and only thing is about probably religion and death is because I don't want to... I don't. I think I don't want to come to terms with the fact that what I believed for so long is probably not true. That's I, one of the greatest things no, in, ever because, in life. Because it's so I, freeing. I still hold on to the the good parts of Christianity. Where so it's do like, I. Should. Where it's like all people are good. You and these should. Things, and it's but it's those, hard for me to separate but those. But those things. predate religion. 
Right. Those are not products of religion. Mm-hmm. Those predate religion. Yeah, your values That's why atheists don't have to are not running, killing people. Right. Yeah. Because those things predate religion. Your values don't have to change because you disassociate it from the dogmatic part of the religion. You can still have those same values. Yeah. I guess I don't like thinking that when you die, nothing happens. Well, you don't have to. That that doesn't necessarily have to go away. But there's other parts that can you can kind of think of. And life is so cool. Bit. And somebody having that ripped from them for no for just because somebody went crazy like that sucks. No, I, I don't want to live in a house where I, that happened. It doesn't. I didn't mean to take good. a fun topic and turn it this <laughs> way. But yeah, yeah. why well, gotta bum us out? <laughs> but, We're trying to talk about murder, Mr. and now you're bumming us out. <laughs> Mister <laughs> Avoidant, of avoidant personality over here is bringing out the reasons why I don't like it. That's exactly what it is. Here I am. I don't like a, someone's life being here taken. Here I from am them. having a good time <laughs> talking about suicide and real estate. <laughs> You gotta go jam it up. <laughs> go jam it up with your beliefs. Over here having a LARF, feel. and you gotta bring JC into it. <laughs> All right, hey, from JC to AC, Alice Cooper is back on the road, boy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> He's touring with Tesla and Lita Ford. Not sure if Drunk Sue ever had dinner with them, but uh, uh, they're coming through June 14th to play Blossom. If you want to go see him, I'll hook you up after the break. 35192 if you want to text. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app.